They have nothing to do with what they did in Egypt. Moses, when he fled Egypt to go to Media, and there he met his father-in-law. You know what the, what the ladies said to their father? He said, they said, an Egyptian helped us. I don't know whether he told them that they were Egyptians, but you can imagine that when Moses appeared to them, he was dressed like an Egyptian. Sorry. He was dressed like an Egyptian. He was looking like an Egyptian. Amen? Because he was from the palace. But when the Lord took him onto the mountain, he saw nothing related to Egypt. But what did he see then? What Moses saw was in fact the house of God in heaven. Meaning, he saw heavenly things. Meaning, he saw eternal things. Meaning, he saw things that transcend the test of time and space. Amen? That, if an, an atheist comes up in 2019 and says, those are old ancient things that are irrelevant for today, just know that that one is lying. Because those matters that Lord, the Lord showed him transcends time. They go beyond time into the eternity of eternities. Amen. Now, what, what happened there? He showed him the house of the Lord in heaven. He showed him the holy of holies, the holy place, the outer court. He showed him the high priest of the Lord. He showed him the priest of the Lord God Almighty, the garment of worship, the ark of God's covenant, and the items related to the worship of God. And when the Lord showed him this, he said, he charged him, he said, see to it, make sure, pay attention to make sure that you do exactly everything according to what I have showed you on the mountain. Because whatever he saw on the mountain, that was the worship that the Lord was restoring on the earth. Amen. What Moses saw was the Lord, in fact, had taken men, took him to heaven, opened his eyes, and he saw the things that ought to be done on earth. The worship that for generations people have been trying, have been, have been missing. The worship that people for, for many thousands of years before that had failed to recognize and failed to understand. Now the Lord opened the, out of the abundance of his heart. He opened heaven and released the revelation of heaven for the first time. And so for the first time now, since the fall, he began to tell men how to worship like they did in heaven, like they do in heaven. That's why you see, he gave them the high priest. The high priest is not matters that are, that, that, that are confined to the Old Testament. Because you see, the high priest showed up when Abraham had finished defeating the kings that defeated Sodom and Gomorrah, Melchizedek, the prototype of Christ Jesus before he came. Amen? So the, 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 the high priest of heaven, when Moses saw him, the Lord said, I want you also to, to, to call Moses that he may stand before me as the high priest that Christ is. Amen? He saw the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of men. Christ Jesus that was slain before the foundation of the world. And many matters that I don't have enough time to get into. But why do I say that these are eternal matters that, do not, that are not confined to the walls of the Old Testament? It is because when you look at the Holy of Holies and the Ark of God's Covenant, these are spiritual principles of God's worship that that, that have gone on to the effect that when Christ came to redeem us, he, fo he followed the very same principle. He followed the very same principle that Moses received. What do I mean? That the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of man. When man sinned in the garden, the Bible says that, you know, in the, in the laws of God in heaven, in the, in the books, in God's book of judgment, the clause there says, the soul that sin, it shall die. 
Amen. That is an eternal principle. Yeah, yeah. The soul that sins must die because it has violated the eternal principle of God, of righteousness and holiness. God does not negotiate when it comes to matters of holiness and righteousness. Amen? And so, we see that, he says, the soul that sins, that soul must die. But, however, for those that are part of the family of God, Christ Jesus will pay the surety. Or the Lamb of God will pay the price. Hallelujah. When, when, when Moses killed the lamb and sprinkled the blood on the, Egypt, on the, on the, on the Israelites, he was, he, was, he, was, he was putting into effect the plan of God that for the people of Israel to be able to stand before God, their sins must be forgiven. Their sins must be washed away. That is a principle that continues, amen? Because man has violated the eternal, the, the eternal principle of God, the eternal command of God, the eternal law of God, and so the soul that sin must die unless it repents and receives forgiveness. But to achieve forgiveness, it says that there must be the shedding of blood. In order that there be forgiveness, there must be shedding of blood, but that blood must be the blood of an innocent sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. But it is not just any innocent sacrifice, but the, the Lamb of God. Amen. It must be the Lamb of God. It has to be the Lamb of God. Otherwise, that sacrifice will not be effective. Amen. I'll fast forward a bit. When you come now, when Christ Jesus came, when he came to the earth to redeem us, it says... Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Amen? This was the Lamb that Moses saw. That's why Moses had to offer the sacrifice of the Lamb. But why did Jesus need to come? Jesus had to come because those that received the worship, the Israelites, they became too familiar with the worship of God. Too familiar. They began not to fear the worship of God. They to the effect that when the Lord said, you must bring a tithe into the house of the Lord, instead, because the plan, the, the idea, the, 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 the instruction the Lord gave them was this, that when you go into your flock, the goats or the camels or the sheep must go out, and then you count from number one up to number ten. The tenth animal, whether it's the whether it's lean, whether it's fat, whether it's the best breed, it does not matter. That belongs to the Lord. Continue counting up to number 10. That belongs to the Lord. They continue going, number 10, that belongs to the Lord. The same goes with the olive trees and everything else. You count one, two, three, four. The tenth tree belongs to the Lord. The fruit is the Lord's. Whether it has abundant uh, fruit or it has little, that belongs to the Lord. Amen? But they became wiser than God. <laughs> To the effect that when the dead animal is the fat, the healthiest in the entire flock, they would substitute it for the sick animal. They would substitute the, the fat animal for the sick one, the one that has, uh, that has foot and mouth disease. The one that is lame. The one that, that is infertile. When you go to the book of Malachi, the Lord took up this issue. And you know what he said in the book of Malachi? He said, Malachi chapter 2, if not chapter 1. In the book of Malachi he says, And now you priests, this warning is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. He rebuked them because they were offering six sacrifices. Chapter 1, verse 6. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, who, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord Almighty? It is you, priest, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? By offering defiled blood on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying the Lord's table is contemptible. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? 
when you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Where would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? He said, try going to the prime minister and say, prime minister, we have a, a very good gift for you from Tobey. He said, what is it? It is a kettle that has foot and mouth disease. He said, how did you, how did he come into this country? We have strong laws to make sure that no diseased animal comes in. And if there is any, it must be cured, it must be treated. Why are you bringing me an animal with foot and mouth disease? Or an animal with anthrax? You want the Prime Minister to eat an animal with anthrax? It's not possible. That the Lord took offense. You dishonor me in your sacrifice, in your worship. Amen? Hallelujah. He says in matters of worship, he does not, he does not negotiate. That's why he ordered that the temple be destroyed. When he sent them out of Egypt, he said, tell my son to go and worship me. He said, let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. Amen? The idea was to worship. He wanted Israel to be a nation of priests. That's what he said. To be a nation of priests, and then that would become now the pattern which he would use to bring all other nations to worship. When they failed, he said, now he's the son of God had to come to fulfill what Moses was tasked with. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The house of God that Moses saw and was asked to build, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, when he built his church, he says, the church, we are members of Christ, right? But on top of that, he says, we are the building of the, the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. The body of God, the believers, the body of Christ is the temple of God. Meaning, when Christ came, he brought the house of God, which then he divided to us. To bring us into that house, to make us priests in that house, like Moses saw the priests on the mountain. And then he became the high priest that Moses saw on the mountain. Amen. Then he says, and so we become the temple of God, the house of God. When, when he restores all things in Revelation, he said, Behold, the temple of God is now man. Some, some versions say. The temple of God is now man. In other versions, they say, the temple of God is now with man. Or the house of the Lord is now with man. <coughs> Amen. So you see, so Christ came to fulfill, to bring to perfection exactly what Moses saw. Amen. Now, but then there is a problem. As I round up, there is a problem. What is the problem? After Christ has done such a powerful work on the cross, and even purchasing for us the glorious holy garment that prepare us for worship in heaven, the scripture that Pastor Tim read from Revelation 19, 6 to 9, he says, that for the bride of Christ has finally made herself ready. But even there you see that there was a problem. Why is it only then? He says, finally. Because she has been struggling. That's struggling going on now in the church. That the bride of Christ, irrespective of the worship that Christ has brought us and has come to restore us to, the powerful work of Christ on the cross. He said, the church of Christ has entered into a place where she is confused. She does not know, or she, she does not know how to distinguish between righteousness and sin. To the place where the church of Christ today, world over, is mixing holiness and unrighteousness. To the effect that the church is going to the world and borrowing ways of worship, how to worship, is borrowing from the world. Say, oh, let me go and see how this musician is singing and then see how the world is singing and bring that into the church. Amen. That we may sing in church like they do in the world. There's a big problem. That the, 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 the pastors have gone into the world and then they said, we want now to run church like a business. That we may make money. They say, when Jesus left, he said, do business until I come. 
But the business of Jesus is not the business of making money to buy private jets and private cars and big homes <coughs> and to milk the church. Yeah? They say, sow a seed that you may reap a harvest. The, the, that the, the worship that the church has assimilated, that the church has assimilated today, is wrong. Amen. It's wrong. And, and there is a big, big struggle, and the Lord is busy restoring his church to that blueprint, to that original worship. And he's speaking especially to the pastors. Because a lot of pastors today are walking away from faith. Oh, well, one pastor, he cannot have children, so he decides, I'm not going to worship this God anymore. He said, the Lord should have given me children if he wants me to continue preaching. What a tragedy. At all, there's a problem. The church is not accepting homosexuality, so I, I, I'm just going to quit. That's a problem. When the church is assimilating, that when the politicians are saying, you must accept homosexuality, then the church is saying, yes, we'll accept it altogether, everything. That, that's a problem. And when the world is saying, yes, we must kill children in the womb, we must accept abortion, it must be legalized everywhere, the church is saying, yes, 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 we want that, we don't want problems with anyone. But the church fathers, the, the apostles, they died fighting for the gospel. Not compromising and giving in to anything and everything that the Romans were suggesting. The Roman kingdom was a very brutal kingdom that has killed many, it was not easy. Whatever we're experiencing here today, in this world, in this nation, has not, is nothing compared to what the church has experienced or will experience very soon. Hallelujah. My time has run out. I will, I will just stop here. But I would like to say this, that the Lord is calling us back to worship. Amen. He's calling us back to the original blueprint of the worship in the garden. Why? Because the Messiah is coming. He says, I will come back. And when I come back, I will take you to be with me. But he will not take a people that are compromising. He will not take a people that are still struggling with sexual sin, immorality, lying, and cheat stealing, and witchcraft. Because the book of Revelation says, outside are dogs, the liars, those that pra practice witchcraft and magic arts. It says those that are, everything is there in Revelation. Say, outside are dogs. But he wants to separate for himself a people that will say, I will serve this God. I will stand with this God. And I will seek righteousness. I will seek holiness. That when Christ comes back, you will find me ready. He says, fine linen was given him to wear. And that fine linen speaks or stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you that when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, you did not destroy the whole earth, even though you could. <coughs> Rather, you decided, Lord, to restore the worship, to restore us back to the original blueprint, to restore us back to the worship that Adam and Eve had observed in the garden. So we thank you, Lord, that you have remembered us that you even sent Christ Jesus out of mercy and grace, that we who deserve nothing from you, Lord, may be able to receive forgiveness, may be able to receive mercy, may be able to receive a second chance, may be able to learn once again how to worship right, how to worship correctly, that we may prepare for the glorious coming of the Messiah and prepare for eternity with God. So I pray, Lord, that you use these words now. Help us, Father, that we may prepare for the glorious coming of the Messiah. That we may be heavenly focused and not earthly focused, Father. In the mightiest name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.